guys, it's Brooke from The Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today I'm getting ready to head outside. I've got some projects that I'm gonna, I gotta get, really do need to get buttoned up. Uh, so the first thing is I'm gonna start planting the additional um, hydrangeas that I have in the hedge. And I'm pretty much gonna do a voiceover because I don't really feel like setting up my camera. Um, but I'm putting a second row of hydrangeas behind the first. I love the way the hydrangeas look, but next year I really want to make sure that that's a really thick hedge that you can't see behind. Um, I've been getting a lot, I got, I've got. i been getting a lot of attention. Some of it's nice, some of it's not so nice. Uh, the downside is that I do have people who have tried to been, who've tried to trespass. And in general, it's, I mean, I understand and I certainly appreciate that people like the effort that I'm going through, but it is annoying on the other hand that you know, there are a lot of times I'm trying to work outside and people are constantly interrupting me and, you know, wanting to come on my property. And listen, I do the gardening for me. It's not, this is not a public property. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people in the area tend to think that if you have a nice garden that somehow it makes it a public park. It doesn't. And, you know, I like, I know it probably seems kind of weird because I have a YouTube channel, but I actually do like my privacy. And so, I like having, I view my house as like an oasis where I can can come back here, no matter how crazy things are outside of my property, I can have some calm and quite frankly, <laughs> I'm not happy about the amount that people are, um, the lack of tranquility that I get. I can't, it's hard to enjoy the garden sometimes. Uh, so next year, um, I'm gonna give them a good start by putting bone meal. Um, I can tell you, and you'll probably have noticed from a different video, that having bone meal makes a big difference. Next year, of course, I will remember to fertilize them. And I think once, I think next year, between the ones that are already there, that are already well established, and the ones I'm making, putting in the second row, I think it'll be a substantial hedge enough that I can, it will be like a wall and I can actually do things like sit out in my garden and read or, you know, have a cup of tea, which is something um, I can't really do right now because everybody's watching. I mean, quite frankly, I can't even really use my front porch because everyone can see what I'm doing. And quite frankly, I've had people on Facebook commenting <laughs> about what I'm doing <laughs> in my, you know, things they're watching me do. And so it's just, it's a little weird. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dig all the holes first because uh, I'm trying to eliminate all the getting up and going down. Um, I ha You probably can't tell from the videos, um, but I do have a very, uh, I have a substantial hip injury on the right side. And so a lot of activity, a lot of strenuous activity, like the way I garden does actually, in fact, bother it, especially now because the weather is getting cold. And so all, with all up and down, it's, I know probably later on tonight, my I'm gonna start getting my leg will probably start going numb. Uh, so I'm trying to avoid that. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, dig all the holes first uh, so I can do that while standing. And then I'm gonna find my knee pads, strap them on, and then basically once, the, the, once I have the plants where I want them to go, I'm just gonna basically crawl and stay crawling on the ground. And then maybe come back and then fill in the dirt standing so that way I don't have to constantly be doing this the entire time. So this is how you garden with physical limitations. So anyway, let me uh, take the camera outside, get it set up, and we'll be ready to go. <laughs> Okay guys, so rather than rather than use cardboard, I actually found some burlap sacks that I had. So I just used those because I have I have a lot of them and it's perfect for a project like that. So I got an empty container that I believe is the same size as the bucket that the plants are in to make sure I, I took out enough dirt. So now that I got to do that, I'm going to finish digging the holes. Uh, the dirt is actually really soft right now because we have a lot of rain. Uh, in this section, unfortunately, there's a lot of tree roots. So that's a pain. Uh, but aside from that, it's actually going a lot more quickly than I thought. Thank you. 
so all of my holes on this side are dug. Uh, so I'm gonna go grab my, I got my bone meal, I'm gonna go get a bigger cup, and because of the size of the hydrangeas, I'm gonna give each hole two pounds of the bone meal. So I have a half cup measure, so that would be, one second, four, four half cup measure fulls. And the, yeah, that because a half cup is four ounces, is it? Oh wait a minute, I gotta give them a lot more than that because two pounds is 32 ounces. So yeah, let me go get the big measuring cup, the, my big pint size cup because that'll be easier. And then I'll come back when I'm ready to put stuff in the ground to tell you the order I'm doing it in. Okay guys, so I hope you can hear me because I left my microphone inside, but I have dug all the holes and I have now filled them with bone meal. Uh, there was two of the hydrangeas I already had that I had to relocate so I've already put those into place. So let me show you how everything is going to uh, come together because I'm like alternating. I'm alternating how I'm putting them in here. So uh, over here that's a limelight. Um, I moved that one from way down there, you see that sign, I'm gonna zoom in on it, that's where that limelight had been over there. I moved it because I don't want it to block the sign. That's a road sign. Okay, so I, the way I'm doing this is uh, limelight, quick fire, which is already here, pinky winky, then limelight, and I dug the quick fire out and put it in its correct place, which is quick fire, and then pinky winky, and then another limelight, quick fire, and then a pinky winky. And over here, I'll show you because I kind of worked it out already. I gotta get all these leaves out, <laughs> it's annoying me. So, I'm gonna do a uh, limelight between these two, uh, and then a quick fire between these two. Um, yeah, these, the bed is way back here, but everything's spilling over. So it'll be limelight, uh, qu quick fire, and then right here will be a pinky winky, and then I can squeeze in one more limelight back here. And then right there, I'm going to put a little quick fire because once again, I don't want it to block this sign. And then in the front, I'm going to I'm going to put a little a little lime uh, up here. And so so that way it'll continue kind of the limelight look. So because I originally had the limelight back there, but I think it's going to I think with its how if it's going to get 12 feet tall and 8 feet wide, I think it's just going to block this, and I need to leave this clear. Um, so I'll put a quick fire, excuse me, a little lime right here, and then a quick fi little quick fire back there. And then with what I have left, I got to do over there. I'll deal with that later. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to go walk the dog because it's time for his morning walk, and then I'm going to pop these in the ground, and then I'm going to start this side. And you know, I don't know. I think I might actually be able to get all of them in the ground today. So. Uh, yay me! <laughs> so, uh, I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. And hopefully I'm not coming in blurry. Alright, because this is my Nikon, and it's a DSL, so it's got a, this lens on it that I'm trying to, uh, maneuver here. So, the nice thing about the cool weather is that you're not sweating to death. Because that's not good for anything. Oh, but you know what, guys, since I'm here, let me show you some things coloring up in the garden. Okay, so that right there is the color wheel aster. I guess I missed the white phase of it. Too bad. Okay, so this is one of my chrysanthemums. I can't tell which one it is. I'll have to wait till it opens. I think it's Oriental Night. It's one of the ones I got from Carolina Chrysanthemum Society. Uh, I have to get, start shaping this, but this is my uh, lilac and it's already got buds on it for next year. So I'm happy about that. Hang on, I don't know if you can see it. I think I'm too close. Okay, 
So it's got buds on it. So I'm happy about that. And this right here is another chrysanthemum. I'm not really sure which one this is. And the tag fell off of it. And so, I don't know. I, I'll have to wait to see. I really don't know. I wrote a down description of all the ones I planted. I don't know which one that is because it doesn't really it doesn't really match what the ones I have written down. But it's still opening. I'll keep you guys posted once it finally opens. Right now, the chrysanthemums seem to have been handling the frost pretty well. Uh, that is the um, cheerleader. This one is a yellow quill. I have to look up the name up. I'll I'll put it on the description. I think the frost may have damaged it. Uh, we'll see. It looks like there's some other buds down there. It's hanging in there. And uh, let's see if there's anything else open. I feel so bad that I didn't stake these chrysanthemums. <laughs> Okay, so this is another yellow one. This one, I believe, is Primrose uh, Mount Shasta. There, it does have some frost damage on some of them, but we'll see, because it's supposed to warm up in the next few days, especially at night. So we'll see how it does. Oh, and then this Pacific Silver and Gold. It's a variegated one. Um, oh, actually, there's a bee on it. It's cool. But it seemed, this one seems to have handled the frost like a champ. So uh, if you're looking for chrysanthemum that's really frost hardy, this one apparently seems to fit the bell. Oh, and you know what? I just remembered my Sheffield pink chrysanthemum is opening. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Oh, I think I'm just a little too close. Okay, so it's kind of small. Uh, but yeah, that's opening. I think it's getting shaded out by the rose. I'll have to trellis that or uh, put an obelisk around it next year. Really happy with how everything is turning out this year. I've definitely exceeded my expectations. I'm definitely looking forward to. Uh, resting a little bit more next year and getting to like truly enjoy it but part of the creative process part of the fun so let me take you out for a walk and i'll see you guys later okay guys so i got my cart loaded up i'm really excited that i don't have to ha make multiple trips i have 12 hydrangeas in here so this is actually enough to do this section of the front hedge I'll have to reload it to do the other side, but at the end of the day, that is, uh, <laughs> that's uh, fewer, only two trips rather than if I had tried to use my other little gorilla cart, oh, I don't know, maybe seven trips probably. So yeah, I'm happy about that. So let me go set up the camera and I'll drive around.